Okay, this is the commentary for the next slideshow coming up, and it starts getting into the subject of textual criticism. Now, uh, of course, it leads off with some you know definitions and so forth, in case you're not familiar with the term. Um, but just some, some thoughts before we get into it. Um, again, kind of going back to, to something that I've alluded to already, and probably will bring up again, and that is this negative... Uh, attitude towards um, scholarship and uh, anyway so a lot of times there's this negative taste you know or negative sentiment that's being um, you know that comes across in the King James only uh, advocate materials uh, about textual criticism and modern textual criticism and just a couple of thoughts you know just to, to remember that the King James translators themselves, uh, to some extent, applied textual criticism because they consulted more than one source to try to derive at what is proper and what is, uh, you know, uh, true and correct. Erasmus, uh, Theodore Beza, Stephanus, all of them guys, they did the same thing. You know, Erasmus, like I said, you know, he started with six manuscripts. So later on, he ended up with about 10 or 12. Um, and so, you know, he put into practice, you know, textual criticism. And, um, you know, the same, you know, was done, you know, prior to that. Um, so it, it's, it's, you know, it's one, of those, it's one of those fields and one of those areas that is necessary... Um, when you're dealing with so many different, you know, manuscripts, you know, today, you know, we're up close to 6,000, you know, cataloged Greek manuscripts. Now, of course, you know, some of them range from just, you know, a little fragment all the way up to complete, you know, books, you know, of, of, of scripture and, and, you know, even scripture itself. But... The, the interesting thing is is there's so many differences among all of the Greek manuscripts. It's not like, of course, you know, they take them, they take them all and they compare them. First of all, you don't have to sort out because, like I said, some of them are fragments. So they sort out. So they might, like, for example, they might look at, you know, books by book. So, you know all the all the ones that contain Matthew. You know they'll they'll compare them line by line, and based on the differences, they will classify. You know because we always have to classify things. That's how we identify and that's how we you know understand things. So they'll classify them by certain you know commonalities that they have, and you know uh, it's kind of been developed. Uh, family names, you know, generally you have like four families. You have Western, you have Alexandrian, you have um, uh, the the majority text. You have, I mean, Byzant uh, Byzantine, and um, and so forth. So, and those are all based on certain common traits that they have. But the thing is, even within a certain family, a specific family like the Byzantine. There's, they don't all 100% agree. There's differ, you know. There's uh, differentiations in, in those. Um, so textual criticism is necessary in order for us to to compare the manuscripts that are available, to analyze them, you know, based on their their similarities and their differences, and you know, uh, they evaluate the manuscripts not by how many of them they have. It's not a vote count. Well, we have 900 for this particular reading and 100 for this, so therefore the 900 must be correct. It's not like that. Um, it is, is they, they weigh the evidence. And so, you know, the age of the document comes into play, um, you know, outside sources, you know, you know, all these things. Anyway, so textual criticism, you know, it is one of those science areas dealing with ancient documents and so it's kind of a necessary thing now I mean you know is it necessary for your pastor to get up and to preach this from the pulpit no this has to do but if you're but 
If you're going to take the position that one translation is superior over another, then you have to get into this field to be able to defend or to explain your position. Because um, that is going to be where the differences lie. You have to back up from what's what's on the front scene. You have to go backstage to see what's going on that got us what we got now. So, anyway, it's one of those necessary evils, I guess you can say, unless it's, unless it, you know it happens to be a subject matter that you love. You know, I'm not um, I'm not educated in Greek and Hebrew and Latin and all these things. So. Um, when I got into this debate was the first time I even heard of the whole subject and the whole field but I've had to you know engage it you know in order to like I said you know to seek out what's true so anyway so that's what these um, um, these next couple of videos are going to be about is textual criticism um, I tried to allow the slide enough time for you to be able to read before it advances if not you know hit the pause button um, Again, the uh, the music that's playing is not the original music that I put to the slide. I created it in PowerPoint, but I found out that YouTube can't upload PowerPoint, so I had to convert it to a different format for YouTube to upload it. And when it did, it lost my audio, uh, so I had to choose one from from uh, YouTube. But uh, it's still in the same category as what I chose for it. But um, anyway, so I hope that it's beneficial and. Um, you know, like I said, it is it is part of the case that I'm presenting. So again, nothing that I'm doing in these things is you know a waste of time. There's a point behind all of it. So um, I just hope that you continue on, follow along, and uh, uh, you'll see where I'm going with it all. I appreciate it.